Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. This is Shy here at the Pumpkin Patch. If you're new here, I homeschool my two girls. They're currently 10 in fourth grade and five in kindergarten. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna share with you about Homeschool in the Woods um, Project Passports, and in particular, their Ancient Greece um, unit that we used for when we did our Ancient Greece unit. Uh, project Passports are hands-on history projects with informational text um, to go along with it. The Project Passport series in general has five units for Ancient Egypt, Ancient Greece, Ancient Rome, the Middle Ages, and the Renaissance and Reformation. Each one's about $34, uh, not including shipping, or but you can also get them in uh, downloads as a family or um, teacher or school license. So a CD or download. It costs more for the CD, which is what we usually get, but you can find them cheaper on eBay too, if you look. Uh, on their uh, units page, it'll show you uh, pictures of the different projects, um, what it's about, what's going to be included. Um, you can see reviews, uh, samples of the lessons, uh, and auditor samples, the scope and sequence, uh, as well as a video just about project passports in general. Um, I'll show you photos in a minute too. But you can go onto their site and find about each one of them, as well as a lot of their other uh, products. They also have time traveler uh, units, which are for U.S. history. Project passports are for ancient history. Uh, they have different timelines, uh, map coloring sets, uh, history packs, which cover like artists, composers, um, states, things like that. And then a la carte projects, which are pieces of these Project Passports and Time Traveler units. So if you just want the board game, or if you just want the timeline, you can go here uh, and get those. Um, but anyway, when you put in your CD into your laptop or computer, uh, I have an external hard drive uh, for mine. You, um, All this will pop up. They have a file for images, the CD graphics if you want those for anything or just project photos in general. And then these will show you all of the pictures f for the final projects for each one. So this is for the Fables of Aesop. And here in these parts you would draw your own illustrations. Uh, this is what the Agora would look like, which is like the marketplace for ancient Greece. Alexander's Conquest, Archimedes, um, a brochure that you would make at the end, and all the just the different things that you can do with as the final projects in this unit. Uh, this lap book folder will show you exactly step by step on how to make the lap book at the end. However, we use or we did something different that I'll show you later instead of making the slap book. This is what it would look like um, at the end if you used the file folder, which is still pretty neat, but uh, we did it a different way. Um, MP3s are all the audio tours, which are pretty cool, to, uh, interesting to listen to. It's like you're actually on a tour uh, in those areas at that specific time. So really at the Olympic Games when they're going on. Um, PDFs are uh, like the cover pages if you use a, um, a three ring binder uh, like this would go in like the front pocket of it just to uh, make sure you remember what folder that goes to um, then the spines for it and then there's intros these cover like acknowledgments um, Additional resources are additional resources are like can show you different books that you could um, get to go along with this unit. Other audiobooks, videos, or DVDs, and then some. If they could add music, they would. But there's no recorded um, history for music back then. 
uh, introduction will tell you about project passports, what the travel tips are, the travel planner, itineraries, um, each lesson is called a stop, uh, things like that for the introduction. Uh, the travel planner is like an overview of what each of the stops have in it. Um, this is for you as the instructor, just to have an overview of what you're going to be doing. And then there's um, icons which tell you um, what you'll be doing, and then the keys are at the bottom. So scrapbook of sites, um, lap book, snapshot moments, uh, postcard, auditor, that kind of thing. And then it goes through each of the stops and just sh to tells you the projects that you'll be doing. And then travel tips cover, um, just give you ideas, like keep hold of um, scrap paper because you can glue on it easier instead of getting your table all sticky or using a full sheet of paper. Um, and then often, or items that are often used within the, um, this unit, so white paper, colored printer paper. Um, we use colored cardstock, colored paper, white cardstock, and like fancy paper that looks like it's like an old, like you could print a map on it, look like an old map, that kind of paper, which you'll see later. Um, quite often, along with double-sided sticky tape, so I highly recommend getting those. Um, and then on this acetate, uh, I'll show you what we got for that. It's not called lacet or acetate, but it's basically the same thing, a plastic cover, to which you could also just, if you have a laminator and laminating sheets, just laminate a blank um, laminating pouch and just use that too, if you wanted. Um, this explains what the different um, icons mean. TK means teacher key. Uh, so that sort of thing. So that'll help uh, if you're new to Project Passports. Uh, this folder holds all the itineraries, which itineraries are the stops and the directions for each project after you read the text. So stop one is laying the foundation. Um, so you'll be creating your luggage folder, which I'll show you in the video, or the section that um, you'll make only once. If you continue to do each of the Project Passport units, you only make the folder once and then put all of your stuff for each one into that folder. Um, but if it's your first time, you'll be doing this step part. Uh, making your own passport, making the folder, um, preparing your uh, scrapbook of sites. And instead of doing the binder and stuff like this, we just hung all of our projects up on the wall until the end. Um, timeline, we decided to make an accordion timeline and hung it up on the wall. Uh, for the figures, instead of cutting them out and gluing and pasting, I recommend getting full-size sticker sheets to print on, then cutting them out that way, just so you can just peel and stick. It makes things more simpler, in my opinion. Uh, but otherwise, you could put them in a binder like this, by like having it up on the wall for like a display. It's more fun that way. Uh, you'll be making a couple maps, which is where the fancy paper comes in uh, to make the maps, which I'll show you also later. Uh, but this is what each of the itineraries look like. Uh, masters are what you need for the projects, but it's like the... Um, like the base of it, like that it would be working on. Like for this one, it's the timeline. So when you print out the timeline stuff, it won't have all the figures on it, but it'll have the names to where you put the figures. So that's what a master is, basically. It's just the base that you'll be working on. Or um, the parts. So like, um, these are the passport inside pages. So you'll end up cutting those out. And uh, just different things like that. Um, Then there's craft cards. Um, for the, This one's for the Agora. So at the stop, you'll be instructed to print this out, and then this will give you step-by-steps on how to make this, if you wanted to. Uh, don't feel obligated that you have to do everything in these units, because it is quite a bit, honestly. And if you've got only a certain amount of time, or a short amount of time, uh, it'll be kind of hard to fit all these in. We ended up doing one stop a day, um, for our unit, and we spent seven weeks, I believe, on ancient Greece. 
So we had quite a bit of time, but it's all on you and what you want to do. And also don't feel like you have to color everything. There's a lot of coloring in these. Um, and you'll see that we didn't color everything either. Uh, the teacher keys are just what they are. They're just answers, basically, for certain things. Like, this will show you the finished product of the timeline. Um, when you have to draw routes or color something, it'll show you um, where to put it or what it will look like. This is just where you would put all of the um, names. Because in the project, you'll be cutting these out and gluing them on there. Uh, this is what I meant about how it shows you the routes. On the project you would print, or you would um, draw these routes yourself and color this yourself. Uh, for us, we kind of cheated, I guess, and I printed out the teacher keys and just glued it on there instead. Just because I thought it looked nicer. I'll explain that later too. Uh, so that's the teacher keys, and then the text. This is where your information comes from for um, each stop. Uh, it's anywhere from maybe three to four to five pages. I don't think there's any more than five, but it gives you the information. So this one's about the Mycenaeans to the Dark Age. So it gives you information about the Mycenaeans first, then into the Dark Age. It might not seem like too much, but it's pretty packed with information. Uh, this one's five pages, so everyday life, so it talks about their jobs, their entertainment. Uh, this is stop eight. Uh, Greek society, crime and punishment, death and funerals. So a whole lot of information in all 24 stops. The 25th stop is just putting the lab book together and making your um, travel brochure and stuff like that. But that's basically um, what those files are. Now, instead of going through each of these files and printing off it that way, this is a very handy tool if you want to just go stop by stop and not be so overwhelmed with all of this. So you just click it and a window will pop up and this is what it looks like. And each, um, it has links for everything that you need. So this is all just the introductory stuff, the travel tips, travel planner, resources, um, the things you need for your binders if you're going to use a binder. And these are quick links. Um, to jump to each stop if you need to. Um, but each stop, so this is stop one, gives you the guidebook, te guidebook text. So you open it, and there it is. So you just print it off just right there. Uh, travel itinerary, just open that, print that off. Uh, and then these photos, you click on it, and it'll sh pop up the photo of what it should look like in the end. Uh, this is more convenient and easier to use rather than go through each of the files uh, as I just showed because uh, right here so for each one preparing the passport and luggage folder this is everything you need to do that so you don't have to go searching for it the same thing for preparing this, preparing the scrapbook of sites and then the snapshot moments in history timeline like all that is here for you and again it'll have all the pictures to show what it should look like in the end So that's really great to be able to, that they make this to where it's easy to follow and understand and gives you everything that you need all in one spot. So there was stop one, then right under it is um, stop two. So you can just keep going one at a time, um, getting all this printed and um, put together. Like it is a lot of work on your part, or if you have older um, kids, they can sit here and do it for you. <laughs> um, and this is, like, you can do it all in white paper, really, if you wanted. But to make it spiffy or fancy-looking, colored paper and colored cardstock is really your best friend, I think. And I'll show you what ours looks like again um, here in a few minutes. Um, yeah, and it goes all the way down um, through each stop. And then one particular stop... Um, Actually, first I better talk about these. So there's different souvenir cards uh, throughout, and each of these is like a bigger, not really a paper project. Like this one is more like, this is where you need plaster of Paris and you make your own fresco with paint. So there are like different projects like that that you'll do 
Here's making a drama mask. I think out of a... I want to say um, clay, I think. But when you open the craft card, it'll tell you... All paper plates and clay. Yeah, it'll tell you exactly how to do all that. So there's just there's different 3D projects like this instead of just all with paper that you can do. Most of those we didn't do mainly because we didn't have the um, the materials. So um, if you wanted to do everything, I would go through and find all of the or find the um, the uh, where is it? Is it masters or oh, teacher keys? Uh, I think the masters. Yeah, yeah, I go through all the masters and find all of the ones that say um, the souvenir card on it. Um, let's see if I can find one. <laughs> oh, right here. They'll say craft card. So I'll go through and find all those and see what materials you would need to be able to do those if you wanted to have everything before you started the unit. Um, and other than those, uh, they also have the audio tours here. This is what this will look like. And then for these, you can also just click them and they'll start right up. Um, it's really neat. And again, very convenient and easy to do since everything's all in one spot for you to grab and print or do whatever. Um, and then my favorite part really for these units is that you get to make, um, a game, uh, like a... A file folder game for right here uh, each of the units so for Greek it's called Greek life and this is what it should look like in the end I don't put it on a file folder but I just laminate the two the boards and put them together that way but you can definitely make it look nicer and put it on a file folder uh, you don't have to color everything but if you have different um, cardstock colors or paper colors that's this is where it would get really handy um, to have that for. Uh, and then like I said it includes everything and it's just a really cool uh, thing because like the question cards are all questions based on what you learned throughout these stops. Uh, so as you play the game you'll draw these question cards um, the other person will ask you the question and you have to be able to answer it. So it's a great review um, game built in. Uh, and then like I said earlier when you go to the website, there's a la carte projects, so you could print out just this game if you wanted, if you're already using other things for ancient Greece. Um, and then it should match up generally, or you'll learn new things. Um, and different stuff like that. But yeah, that's pretty much essentially what Project Passwords is. It's a hands on history um, project based curriculum with information, various really cool projects to do a built-in review game um, and it just it shows you what to do step by step and it's just really awesome. Uh, the final stop is packing up. You make your own travel brochure and assemble the lab book. Um, again you can click here and it'll give you the step by steps or that's just the, um, the thing. Uh, for the front of the folder, but right here it'll show you how to make that lab book. And then now I'll show you the um, video clip of what we did instead of making this lab book. If this is your first um, project passport, you'll end up making a folder like this. Um, these I printed these on uh, in color on sticker paper and just put them on here as like a, just travel stickers. Uh, we've already done ancient Egypt, Greece, and ancient Rome. Um, you'll end up making a project passport um, with a, you'll put a picture in there and then a stamp for each place that you go to and then you put when you started it. Um, each passport has enough for all of the units within um, that passport. So project passports is all about world history so there's a page for each one of them. Next we'll do Renaissance and the Middle Ages. Uh, and then in the travel log, you'll um, just write in answers to like what your favorite activity was. Um, uh, what was your favorite place? Who was your favorite uh, person to learn about? And stuff like that, and just different notes. So that's 
fun. Uh, and this is all the projects that we did for Project Passport, uh, Ancient Greece. Um, at the end, you're normally supposed to make a lap book, but I liked binding these into just this book so it's easier to keep and it's more fun. This is what the timeline looks like. I have it made to where you can just fold it out. Um, and each uh, figure has information and dates on it. And then fun little uh, pieces just to go uh, with it. Like here's a library card for the Library of Alexandria. Uh, this is one of the maps that you'll make. Um, I like getting um, really cool different kinds of paper to print on instead. And that's what this is. This is random paper. It's like this on front and back. I think I got it at uh, rainbowresource.com. Uh, but you can also find them on Amazon pretty easy. Uh, and then you just cut them uh, different titles out and places and battles and make maps that way. There's a couple of them that you'll make uh, for Greece. Uh, this is just one I printed out um, for Greece. And here's the postcard rack. These are what the postcards look like. You can draw illustrations on the back, but we decided not to. There's about Helen and his sons in different areas of settlements, uh, different columns. Uh, one about the hierarchy of Greece, so kings and tyrants, aristocracies, democracy. They've got information and little pop-up pictures inside. I uh, don't feel like you have to color everything. Like we, a lot of the stuff we didn't want to color because it's there's a lot of coloring if you decided to do everything. Um, so don't feel obligated. You don't have to. Uh, colored paper helps a lot just to make things like, nice looking. Uh, this is the grandeur of Athens. So it's just about uh, different people. Uh, the Athenian government, Athenian trade. And it just has information about it in each one. Uh, this is comparing and, compare and contrasting uh, Athens and Sparta. Um, this is about clothes and accessories in ancient Greece. And this little uh, jar thing uh, gives information. And then it, there's little cards you'll print out and cut out uh, for the different styles. Uh, Might of Sparta. So same thing as before with Athens, but this one's about Sparta. Uh, the greasy spoon. I love that these are included. These are um, like recipes that you can do to have um, to try to make food uh, and drinks from whatever you know you're doing. So for Greece, these are all Greek foods uh, that you can try and do cooking with. There's also um, a book that you'll see in our fourth grade um, resource list that. Uh, or a PDF that is like food and cooking in ancient Greece or something, I can't remember. That has a bunch of recipes like that too that would be really fun to check out. Uh, clothing, women's clothing, so they have a basic chitin and then uh, this is a Greek woman in Doric Peplos and then a Greek woman in Ionic Chitin. Um, some of these just be creative and pick colors, there's not really any proper like color code for most things. This is a men, uh, and a Spartan, or Greek warrior, rather, uh, armor, and then just a traveler. Uh, this is a Greek house, so it gives a cutout to what it would look like um, on the inside, and what each room was for. Some men were for the men and just for the women, and then the outside. Uh, these are just souvenir cards. Some we didn't, uh, we wanted to be able to save parts of like these 3G objects. Like you would have been able to make a Parthenon, but instead of making that, we just, um, actually I'll show you in a minute. We just cut out the pieces and um, glued them onto a, a cardstock paper just to have them. But you can make 3D stuff like this. Uh, so that was the Parthenon and the, the Agora. Uh, Tectonic solids, 
Uh, you can paint your own fresco, uh, a clipstra, and Greek pottery. Uh, and really, really cool to get terracotta pots to do this with, but we didn't have any at the time. But those are souvenirs. These aren't all of them either. There's other ones where you can make clothes, um, but we didn't get to anything like that. And you don't have to do everything in these units either, if you didn't want to. Uh, jobs in ancient Greece. This tells about each one. This little wheel spins around to show you the illustrations. Uh, these are really cool. This is um, the um, like a fandex, but of ancient Greece um, people, important people. Uh, you can color these if you want to, but we decided not to. And then these are just little um, ancient Greek um, writings and words that went with a uh, code cracker book I'll show you here in a little bit. Uh, this is what I meant by instead of making the, like, the agora we just kept the pertinent information and just made little pockets for them instead of making the 3D oops, no upside down instead of making the 3D um, project just so I could have it would be easier to keep I guess the information but then like this you can also do stuff like this these were the um, you could make little stalls for the Agora. Um, my daughter actually gets these out every once in a while to play with her dolls and stuff. She can just tape them together and then untape them when she's done with them and put them back. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there's those. There's little figures in here that she can use. Um, and then different building pieces. Uh, this is... Uh, literature in, of ancient Greece. Um, so this is talk about the writing, linear A and B. They're just little scrolls, and then information that folds out for each one. I thought this one was pretty cool. Again, we just used um, fancy printed kind of paper, and I think it looks a lot cooler. But you don't have to do that. Uh, this one talks about fables of Aesop. Uh, instead of drawing illustrations, uh, I just found. Um, pictures of the stories on Google and printed them out. It's just a lot easier. We're not very artistic when it comes to drawing, so it's just easier that way and still looks nice. Uh, Archimedes. Uh, this one's about medicine and disease. Uh, influence of ancient Greek poets. Uh, and then just like with the Aesop Babels, this is stories of Greek heroes, and I just found images uh, to print on there instead of drawing things out. It just works out easier that way. And stories of Greek immortals. Uh, so it's just myths of ancient Greek. Uh, these are ancient Greek wonders of the world. A lot of them are actually come from ancient Greece, which is I thought was pretty cool. So they have the illustrations, and then you'll glue uh, the information about them on the back. Uh, constellations. Uh, uh, they just have a couple of them. And then just information about them here on this one card. Uh, some, about a Trojan horse. Uh, instead of drawing soldiers, I just printed a single one to put in here. Uh, this one's about Greek armor, weapons, and warfare. So the Greek the armies, the armor, weapons, mercenaries, the different um, formations, dreams, and sea battles. Uh, the Greco-Persian Wars. Uh, this is um, the Battle at Thermopylae of the 300 Spartans. So like stuff like that, it, it's fun to watch um, movies too that co go along with uh, actual historical events. Even though the movies might all, not always be all, always be 100% accurate, they're still pretty fun to watch. Uh, this one's about the Peloponnesian Wars. Again, I just put uh, images on there instead of drawing things out. Uh, this is for the uh, Pantheon. I just put the factual information in a couple of the images instead of actually building it. 
uh, stuff like this where it wants you to draw out routes and color things in, I find it easier just to, and nicer looking, just to use the teacher keys that come along most of the time uh, with everything and just print that out and glue it on there instead just because it looks a lot nicer. Uh, here's the Journal of Alexander. Again, we just used fancy paper. Uh, and then for this, um, I just wrote out the sayings that were on the pa paper um, that you'd write in yourself usually, but I just typed it up that way and printed it out. Uh, here's another one um, for the division of Alexander's empire after he died. Uh, and then this is about the Midian Revolt and uh, basically the, the Jewish Hanukkah and why that's there. Um, so like stuff like this, we're, we're a secular family. However, this curriculum isn't particularly secular. So it does like mention the word God and stuff like that, but stuff like that isn't very... Like, we're not opposed to mentions of God and stuff like that. As long as it's not saying, like, you have to believe this and you have to do that kind of thing. Like, it's not a big deal to us if it mentions it. It's still a word to learn. It's, religion's still a huge part of the world history, and it changed a lot of things. And you'll find a lot more uh, Christianity-based stuff when if you do the Ancient Rome one, which you'll see when we do the, or when I make the Ancient Rome review. Um... Yeah, that's it for the project passports, and that's how I made um, all of our projects instead of doing a lap book. I liked it a lot more easier, and it's a lot easier to keep and have. Uh, again, this is the Homeschool in the Woods project passport uh, for Ancient Greece. Again, it's a hands-on history project uh, curriculum with informational text, lots of projects to do, and just packed full of information, but in a really cool, uh, fun way. I don't, I don't know of anything else that's this engaging, I guess, for history. Um, that's, even though this is like a, a religious-based curriculum, um, we as a secular family haven't found any issue with using it as of yet. We've made it all the way through ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, and the ancient Rome project passports. And even with, um, in ancient Rome, you'll find if you do that one, uh, is when Christianity really starts to take over um, in ancient times. And even then with all of that, it wasn't like preachy. It wasn't like telling us to like go believe in Christianity or anything like that. It was just giving like the factual information that what was happening back then and how Christianity was involved. Um, so, so far it's been really awesome for us as a secular family, but even as a faith-based family, um, I don't see any issues that you'd find. Um, but like I said, that we've only done those first three, and we'll be moving on into um, the Middle Ages and the Renaissance and Reformation next year. So we'll see how it goes. But even with editing, um, I still plan on using all of these, the rest of the Passports and the U.S. Time Traveler series, just because I love the project, and I love being able to make that, um, that book that I just showed of all the projects together and to be able to keep and look back on and remember... Um, what we learned and it's really just a fun family thing like you can incorporate um, your whole family into it making this and it's just it'll create a lot of really great memories and just have something really cool and an end uh, to be able to keep so I highly recommend um, these project passports and time traveler units and seriously go check them out they're really just really cool um, anyway, that's about it for this uh, video. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, you can comment down below or head over to this video on my Facebook page and comment there. Um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to support the Pumpkin Patch. I'd really appreciate that. Um, and you can also join my Facebook group, uh, the Pumpkin Patch Homeschool Resources and Community, um, where I share um, videos, uploads, of our resource PDFs and uh, just general homeschool stuff in general and life updates. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.